hi everyone, I'm Sam Seaton, the, the CEO for Money Hub, and Money Hub really is all about uh, open finance. It's about uh, exactly as Josephine was saying earlier, it's really about getting everyone um, into the fields of financial wellness. And to do that, as we all know, you, you need to, to save into your retirement um, fund and you need to uh, get yourself onto the road for for um, financial, really financial um, freedom, I guess, is guess the word we all talk about a lot. So that's, uh, that's what we're all about, really. It's pretty fundamental, actually, because without uh, clarity, I don't think you can gain control of your finances. And traditionally, wealth management has been less than transparent is, 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 the, is the word I would like to use. So the technology open banking has really made inroads to surfacing for consumers, you know, what, what it is that they are using their money for, where it's going, why, how, and open finance extends that beyond their current accounts, credit cards, into pensions, investments, onto the platforms, what, what is actually happening, where their money's going, how much it's costing. You know, we were on a panel recently where we had, you know, four 28 to 32 year olds. They already had five pension pots between them, as in each of them already. And I think that isn't going to change. So being able to give people visibility over their money is one of the biggest things we've, we've seen open finance uh, enabling really. similar um, in, in the challenge that we have with open banking because the CMA9, which represented about 80% of the um, current account market, were targeted first with the PSD2 legislation in the UK, uh, but it didn't exclude, the PSD2 legislation has not excluded the remaining 20%, which had to follow on, you know, after the CMA9, you know, kicked off. Uh, so it's very similar to the, in the pensions world, you know, there are 12 main pension providers that cover 80% of pensions in, in the UK. So clearly, you know, the staging and prioritization of data and, and I guess the effort that will go in to try and getting, you know, that up and up and running is something that the pensions dashboard is looking at. But fundamentally, you can't have legislation where an employer is legislated to actually contribute to people's pensions. And I, as an employee, are also having, by law, to contribute to my pension. And then when I get to retirement, I have no way of knowing what money has gone where and where it is for me to, to draw down on my retirement. I mean, that, it, that, isn't, that isn't something that we can do. So going back to these, these um, unclaimed pots that um, you know, Dan was speaking about before, you know, that, that, isn't, that is just not sustainable. So, you know, it's kind of a, it would be a, a, criminal, a criminal act for us, for us to do that. So uh, it's, it's non-negotiable, the pension dashboard. Some of the, the companies are going to struggle. Um, I, I heard of one, you know, the other day where, you know, actually the, the records were burnt in a fire, so they, they don't exist. Um, so there are challenges without doubt in terms of getting this, but, but let's be clear, you know, 80% of people's pensions are covered by 12 providers. I'm really keen to be able to actually give consumers truly single, you know, point of customer view, holistic advice, whatever you want to refer it to it as. But it's not just your pension, is it? So, you know, while we're at it, if we're doing open banking and open pensions, which I think, you know, is a given. What, what, what about property? You know, what about loans, mortgages? You know, what, why can't we, why can't we take it as a stepping stone to actually make the APIs available across the board? But but unfortunately, we seem to be doing it a bit piecemeal. And I, and I know, um, Joe, from, from my time in Australia, my, my, my connections there, you know, is that they, they have legislation to go from, you know, right the way through to even the utility and the telco providers. And they're going to do it in four stages, but, you know, they've already committed legislative-wise to start with open banking, move to the investments and pensions, and then onwards, you know. So I think really where, where we're heading as a world is to open data. And um, for those of you interested in looking at where, you know, regulation hasn't been needed, I mean, look to Japan and also look to DBS Bank, 
where they uh, did as um, Daniel is suggesting, but they went whole API enabled and just made all their APIs for everything they do. And, and I really think that is where we're heading. So, but for pensions and for open banking, um, it's it's you know it, it's law. It's you know it's not it's not negotiable.